Hello, wherever you are in the world, and thank you so much for joining this, the final positional analysis video of 2022. But do not fret, in 2023, probably the second week of January, we are going to start with fullbacks and wings and centres and go all the way until we finish with a halfback. So at least seven weeks worth, eight weeks worth of content where we dissect the positions. Thank you so much again for all your support for these videos. This week, we're looking at the lock, the loose forward. And unlike second row, where it's quite clear what type of role a second rower might play, the lock is very much open to interpretation. I've heard it described as the glue that holds a pack together. Personally, I think it's the glue that holds a team together. Whenever I've used a lock, I've looked at that role as somewhere that I can use to literally finish the team off in the sense that if we need some hands, I'll put a lock in that, that can bring some hands to, to the equation. If we need an extra heavy body, I put somebody there that's basically like a third prop. I've done so much with with the lock position. It's it's uh, I probably shouldn't cover it here, or else the video will be too long. And in that sense, it was very hard to decide what to analyse. So I've decided to analyse two of the best locks running around at the minute, Jason Tamalolo and Isaiah Yo. And I've also added on the, uh, there some old footage of Ellery Hanley, which is a bit grainy, but I keep going on record in saying that I think Ellery Hanley is one of the best locks that's ever played the game. Now, this is footage from the World Cup, and I think you'll find that there's a clear difference in the physical condition of both the players. I'm going to be quite brutal about it and tell you what, what we'd be looking for in the in the lock position. So when I share my screen, we're going to be starting with Jason Tamalolo playing for Tonga against Samoa. So what I'm looking at from this point of view is the first 10, 12-ish minutes of the game. So this was Tonga's last game in the tournament, their first knockout game. And I've taken the last game of Australia's tournament for his IAO. OK, the first 10, 12 minutes of each game. So we're looking for their involvement. Now, of course, what this doesn't take into account is what they did for the, the next 70 minutes, how many times they were interchanged, how many times they changed position while on the field. If I was to do that, we'd have a three, four hour video. So to make sure this video isn't too long, I've got to pick a, a section. So there's my little caveat. That's my little uh, disclaimer, if you like, for, for this video. Because what I don't want is to have a load of Cowboys fans saying, oh, yeah, that's not fair on Jason Tamalolo. But I think you'll see when we watch the footage that Tamalolo probably isn't at his fittest. He's just passed the ball from, from dummy half there, but he's actually running behind the defensive line, not joined it. Um, when you see him in a minute, you'll see he's defending in the middle. And there's a big clue that I want you to look at about mentality and um, thought processes. So he's gone in, has he gone in third man there, would you say? Or second man? Or, or probably joint second man. He's falling down with his tackle, but he's actually falling on top of one of his men. Now, one of the toughest things for big men to do in a game of rugby league is to have your, you, you're getting up and down off the ground. Okay. What Tamalolo has done there has fallen on top of one of his players as well. Therefore he's not going down as far. And secondly, he's made sure he's at marker. Now you could argue maybe he should have gone back to a defender himself. Let's have a look again. Sorry, poor control from the other video. Let's have a look. I'm really looking it through a fine tooth comb here, and I want you to be cognizant of that. Now, let's have a look. Yeah, let's have a look at this rook. So I would say this man bent down here is in control, and I would say the man on top of him is in control of the tackle because Tamalolo lands on the top. From that position, I would argue Tamalolo should go back to a defender because these two have more control over the body on the ground. Instead, look what's happening. Number 17 comes off. And don't get me wrong, that could be an instruction that anybody on the legs comes off, but it's just a little thing I picked up there that Tamalola might be pacing himself a little bit through this game. He probably does look slightly not in the best condition, and this does happen during World Cups, to be fair. Um, players do not train quite as hard. They've had a tough season, particularly with the Cowboys running running high in the competition. Now, he's involved in another tackle here. And this is one of the key things I saw. 
he's gone in to basically catch and to wrestle, but there's no desire here from him to drop the Samoan player to the ground. If he is, he's pulling against his number eight, Fanua Blake, and Fanua Blake's pulling in the opposite direction. So there's no coherent rook strategy here. And Tamalolo stays on his feet and so does Fanua Blake. Like I said, one of the toughest things you can do is drop to ground as a big man. So he stayed up on his feet there. Uh, he has done well to kick chase there. Probably I was distracting your thoughts there. So just look at his kick chase here. So fair's fair. He's gone hard on kick chase. So that's good. So maybe without even realising it, he's trying to take some shortcuts without even realising it in the game. I fast forwarded this so you know what tackle it is. So it's a slightly forward speed. But here's Tamalolo on the third play. Let's dissect his carry. So that's the second play. Tamalolo catches the ball now. Um, good width from the rook. I like that. What I am worried about, though, is how open his body was going into the collision. What you can't see from there is his catch, and I don't think there was any chance of him tipping the ball on because I think the way he caught it was close to his stomach. Photo Acre is going through a hole here. If we're going to be really nitpicky, if his hands were up, he could have kept those blue defenders away from him a little bit longer to get some go forward. This will all become clear when you see, as I yo, why I'm nitpicking at this. Great leg drive from him, but he should have maybe crashed down to play the ball. Now, instead, he gets sort of basically put back to where he was. He's played the ball, though, really good in terms of where he ended up. So, look, I don't think JT was in the best physical condition for this tournament. Uh, let's have a look. What's he doing here? OK, he's in another tackle again. And there's some penalty, but again, I don't think there was any major effort to get the, the the player to ground between those players that were quite happy to stay on their feet. This carry again, his carry was a bit better there. Good carry. I love the way he carried it in two hands. So I was quite critical of his last carry, but watch this one and we'll really dissect it. Yes, he caught it on his stomach. So that stands to reason that the previous one he caught on his stomach too, because that will be a habit. But he has pulled it out in two hands. He has got support with him. And he also isolated one defender, knocked himself into them. And he's turned his body sideways and now found the floor really well. So that is good. And he's found his, his right elbow and he's going to play the ball with his right foot. So that was all fine. That's his best carry so far. So even though we are looking at the first 10 minutes, there's an argument here that he's warming into the game. Right. I can't help but think he's more of a prop than a lock, though. And I think this is where the coach was coming in when he made life a little bit harder for him when he arrived. Todd Payton at the Cowboys, that is. Let's have a look at his role now. He's in the middle of the field. He's not getting involved in any ball distribution. So he's basically thinking of acting of, as a decoy or a ball carrier. Here he's walking. So we're at the 11 minute mark of the match. Again, I want you to watch the the full video before you get the context. He's now got involved with the third carry. And it's fair to say his carries are getting better and better as the game goes on. Okay, so here he is. He carries the ball. Good width again from the rook. He's running an overs line here, but then he turns it into an unders line. Good footwork and great position to be in a play the ball, to play the ball quickly. So I think it's fair to say he grew at the game, as the game progressed, okay? Now, this is Zayeo in the grand final. Now, look, it's fair to say that, sorry, the World Cup final, the grand final, it's fair to say these two guys are two of the best locks in the game right now, okay? So this is why we're looking at it through a critical eye. Let's have a look at what Zayeo does through this game. I will interchange between calling him Yeo and Yo sometimes. <laughs> uh, okay, we're at the World Cup final. And because of the silly numbering system, I originally thought that was his IAO, but then I remembered that he didn't have a moustache. Anyway, I'm, I'm taking you through this set to see where his IAO gets involved and how he gets involved. Second tackle, this is him now. Good footwork, good leg drive, and yeah, he probably got dominated a little bit and his play of the ball was okay considering. So not as physically potent as JT, but watch this now. He uses his hands. He uses, or looks to use his hands and takes another carry. So in the first 10 minutes, we have three carries from, from JT. And in the first 40 seconds, we've had two from Isaiah Yo. Watch this. 
carries the ball in two hands, brings runners with him, does a bit of a show. I think that's Jake Chabrovich. If there was a gap inside, he would have passed that ball, I assume. But he's helped some defenders stay off him. And he's got a two-man collision rather than the three-man collisions that Jason Tamalolo was facing, if you remember. So great involvement really early on from him. There it is in slow motion again. Just decoys on the inside, gets two defenders rather than three. The third one, Junior Parlo, comes in a lot later. And Yo has got some good go forward there. Two carries in the first set. Let's have a look at his involvement in the rook. He's in the middle of the field where the lock tends to be. There he is, number 24. Yes, he's on his feet. You could argue that's exactly the same as Jason Tamalolo. There was no major effort from those two guys to get the Samoan player to the ground. The good thing about this analysis is because they're both playing Samoa, we can do an apple, apple versus apple scenario. Now, Isaiah's in the tackle right now with, I can't remember who number six was actually, and I can't tell. But the attacker is certainly trying to drop to the ground. Watch what Isaiah Yo does in this rook. He, oh, is that a grapple? But he's making an effort to get to the ground. And on the ground, he is squeezing his opponent. I've put that in again. Watch this. He's in, squeezes him tight, gets him to the ground. And that's great rook control. Look at the control. That ball isn't getting played. And I would argue that out of the two locks so far, Jason Tamalolo has been a bit sloppier around the rook than Isaiah Yo. And I think these are little one percenters that make a difference all the time. OK, <clears throat> let's have a look. Um, Teddy getting thrown around. This time, Isaiah Yo passes the ball. So Jake Jabrojevic and he seemingly have a understanding. Don't forget Jake, somebody who plays lock two. Yo's going to come across. He's got the ball in two hands. Remember last time he dummied and went. So the defence is hanging off him a little bit. This time, it hits Jake on the inside. So the difference between Yo and Jason Tamalolo so far is that Yo is basically a third pivot in many ways. He's using his hands. There he is again. Yo constantly carries the ball in two hands. So we've got the decoy runner coming inside. I say the decoy because he didn't get the ball. Really, he's an option runner. Yo's got the ball in two hands. This is only a short clip because of the coverage of the coaches. And he carries the ball constantly. Yo keeps getting two tackles, two tackleers, should I say, each time he carries the ball. So there's two people in there. Now, here he comes as an, as an extra pair of hands. So he's always a threat. What Yo is doing is making sure that he's always a threat going up the line and these options. He's not just carrying the ball. And if we compare that to Jason Tamalolo, it's actually quite clear what Jason Tamalolo is going to do. He's going to run the football. Let's see where he pops up again here. So we're now in the good ball area. He gets involved now. Because I put this in because I wanted you to see how he gets involved in the set now. So Ben Hunt's had a run. What's now going to happen is Yo's going to come in as an extra pivot because Hunt's tied up. So he catches the ball there. It's in two hands. It gets picked off, and you could argue the, the runner isn't deep enough, but that's Yo using his hands. But I think the key difference between the two is that when Tamalolo carries the ball, he gets tackled by three men. So watch this. Yes, he's got people with him, and he's pulled the ball out, but three men go in to tackle him. Okay? When Yo carries the ball, because of his options around the rook, he gets people away from him. Because he's got options around him, the initial contact is always two people. That's a key difference when it comes to when you are thinking that Yo is a Premiership winning lock and a World Cup winning lock and Tamalolo finished lower down in each competition. That would suggest to me that Azai Yo is the better lock of the two. Now, I think the best lock that's ever played the game is a guy called Ellery Hanley, and I'm going to scroll to the video. Very gold, very old, grainy footage, but I'm going to show you why. One of the things that Isaiah Yo did was quite a lot of support play there. Now, watch Ellery Hanley here, support play in the number 13 jumper. You've not seen anything yet. Wait until you see this. This is a fella who also played 5'8 for Balmain and Locke. Look at his support on the inside. He's got no number. 
He was a great support runner, Elroy Hanley, read the game very well, very good at reading play inside. He was almost ahead of the play there. I, I remember once seeing him about five metres ahead of play and the referee didn't pick up on it. The amount of times he scored tries like this and the athleticism of the guy, and because he's played 5 8 too, he can distribute the ball. I know it's a different era, but he's got the number six jersey on here, very athletic, and I think he would have survived in any era of rugby league and thrived. As you can see, a lot of these tries are quite similar because he pops up in support, but here he is running lines. Great try. And in the same game, scores a try again. This is a local derby, St. Helens and Wigan, which is quite tough. There he is pushing up on inside, reading the game very well and playing a bit of football, soccer to score the try. I could show you a thousand clips, but this is probably one of the best. Here he is in support again to a flying fullback. And he runs the ball 45 degrees across for about 30 metres to score a try. Let me show you that again. Ellery Hanley, the lock, caught up with the fullback who was flying and was in support and runs 45 degrees to the try line. Unbelievable. So I'd always go on record saying I believe Ellery Hanley was the best lock ever. There was a highlights video that I took some of that. It was 20 minutes long, but it was only his career up until 1986. He played until the mid-90s. Jason Tamalolo and Isaiah Yo. Clearly, to me, Jason wasn't the peak of his game when he played for Tonga there. And he also gives all the signs that he's carrying the ball one up quite a lot. Even though he's got support, he doesn't carry the ball all the time in two hands. And three people come in on him. Another reason three people will come in on, it, come in on him is because he's a heavy bulldozing body, which again, aligns himself with being a prop. And I think that's why when Todd Payton arrived at North Queensland Cowboys, there was that bit of uh, back and forth between the two, where they decided where he was best suited. On the other hand, Isaiah Yo is clearly a footballer. He's not the best footballer you've ever seen, but he brings people to the line. He brings them with two hands on the ball. He uses them and he can pass the ball, so the defenders instinctively stay off him a little bit and only put two in, and that allows him to get more leg drive. The other thing in that first 10 minutes of the game, Isaiah Yo got a lot more heavily involved, and he was also quite good at pushing up in support too. So, based on that, I'd have Jason Tamalolo a prop, and I'd have Isaiah Yo at lock if they were in the same team. If you're watching this before Christmas, have a belter. If you're watching it after Christmas, whenever you're watching it, I hope you had a belter whatever year you're watching it. These videos have been very popular. The next one in a couple of weeks will be fullbacks. Take care. Love you all.